After the learning session in the afternoon, Pra Ajahn and the novices headed to the water pavilion. During the Nampana session, Pra Ajahn told the story of a wealthy Indian man who wanted a Tibetan king's land. The king told the man to run around the land he wanted. He then ran around the mountains and rice fields from dawn to dusk, and then returned to the king. So until, until three o'clock at, at the noon, eh, oh, he, really, he, he will forfeit the land because nearly sunset, he's very quick. He ran like, like the horse, you know, go back. <laughs> Go back to the palace to see the king. One is arrive the arrive the palace, uh, because he finished his energy, everything, and then he drink drink the whole day. Because of the greedy he won. So, so the king asked, "Have you got your land?" He said, "Yes, yes," and then he died. <laughs> the moral of this fable is that the desire for unnecessary excess is greed that leads to dukkha, or suffering. DJ, this, this story I want to tell you, just like today, when you're eating, you want one pizza, two pizza, three pizza. You take three pizza, you know, how big your, your stomach is. After the Nampana session, Pra Ajahn had the novices tidy up the requisites in the water pavilion, and then sweep the leaves in the yard and nearby areas. Prior to the evening chant, Pra Ajahn and the novices meditated calmly while waiting. Once their minds and bodies were at peace, Pra Ajahn began the evening chant to recall the triple gem. It is excellent because it is well expanded, and it can be divided into path and fruit, learning and liberation. Last night, Pra Ajahn Gewali, the abbot of Wat Chat, or the International Forest Monastery, gave a sermon to the novices. The novices chanted the Koni Saya in preparation to travel to Wat Banana Chat to stay and learn in the upcoming days. After the Koni Saya ceremony, the novices offered flower garlands and handmade toothwoods to Praachan Gewali, a traditional practice from the Vinaya. This is an act of respect and a request to become his disciple. And toothwoods? Did you make them by yourself? Wow. Pra Ajahn asked the novices who came from different parts of the world about the different time zones. How many hours time difference between? Uh, I think if 5 p.m. Hmm. it's gotta be like almost in the morning here. You have to imagine the world like there's so many different people getting up, going to work. There's constant activity all over the world. And we, we always have the feeling like we're the center of the world. We sometimes forget there's other people somewhere else. And um, we sometimes forget like, to think of like, like other people in other countries. So it's really nice to come together like this. And we're doing the same thing all together at the same time. Then Pra Ajahn Gewali discussed meditation with the novices, allowing the novices to share the feelings they have while meditating. Sometimes I feel a bit weird because sometimes I feel on my foot is like tingle sometimes because I sit there too much okay. and then um, my foot normally gets tingle or sometimes when I stand up uh, I hurt my leg oh. and, and it 
doing it because my leg, I feel like I'm doing this, but actually I'm doing um, that other move like that. Okay. Pra Ajahn advised them that there is no fixed method of meditation and that the novices should practice at their own convenience. They might count their steps or pray Bhutto. Regardless of the method used, the main focus was to concentrate on the present moment. Pra Ajahn Gewali introduced Pra Ajahn Sunanto from the US, who accompanied him to Thailand. Um, hello, my name is Ajahn Sunando. Uh, I've been in Thailand for roughly 14 years. Uh, I ordained as a, as a monk for 13 years and I was a novice for four years before that. So altogether about 17 years ordained, but officially 13 years as a monk. Pra Ajahn asked the 12 novices why they ordained and then gave them a short sermon. Uh, to understand suffering, the cause of it, the Very end good. of it, and the path towards the end of it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent answer. Can't say anything better than that. <laughs> pra Ajahn Gewali gave a sermon on the origin of suffering and asked the novices to share their experiences of suffering. Um, my brother, he oh. broke his collarbone. At, in England, where my nanny lives there, and then she needs help from my auntie, and she has cancer in her hips, I believe, and her right eye is like, she can't open it because the cancer is spreading in her body. Pra Ajahn taught them that the causes of suffering are hard to avoid, but we can do our best to help someone ease their suffering. Say, so, and if you have that recommendation for somebody else, you just tell them, don't worry, just go to sleep for a while, relax, let go. You don't have to do anything right now. You're sick, you're suffering, you got a headache. I see, uh, I, I think you can let go. You give them encouragement. Maybe there's no, yeah, yeah, you can't suggest surgery to him or so, and you can't, <laughs> you can't, you know, there's not much you can do. You can only give advice. Sometimes that's also very important, like being a good friend and giving advice. Then Pra Ajahn Gewali had Pra Ajahn Sunanto give a sermon on how to deal with suffering. So it's, it's more a matter of just trying to see what's happening, the very basic things in life, basic things like your own body or your moods or your thoughts. And then you can reflect on these in, in a very basic way. Whatever is impermanent you can't keep. Whatever you can't keep, you have to let go. You don't really have an option. It's not even really possible to keep anything impermanent. So that the more that you let go intentionally, then the more freedom you have, and the easier it is to practice, and the more that you develop. And when you let go of things, often you develop more panya, more wisdom. And then when you learn to let go of things, you can actually have happiness. At the end of the talk, Pra Ajahn Gewali mentioned the topic to be learned during the third week, which is on love and compassion. Does anybody know how you call this, like to have like compassion with somebody like this? What's the Pali word for that? Karuna. Karuna, that means compassion. Great. And compassion, and then there's another word that we sometimes use. Karuna, Karuna and Ma. Meta. Meta. Okay. Okay, great. So this is actually, honestly, like this is the topic of this week is like loving kindness. So one way, if you face suffering for yourself, you can say, okay, I'll let go. And also metta, you, you just find something that you can lift up his, his spirit. Sometimes you need to kind of charge it with your good energy and then just feel like you're sending your friendship and your love, your metta, your compassion there. After finishing the sermon, Pra Ajahn and the novices chanted to spread loving kindness to all living beings. This is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who know the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech. Yesterday's discussion widened the novices' knowledge of chanting, meditation, and spreading loving-kindness. 
The novices realize that they have the potential to share compassion and kindness with other people unceasingly. Another day of training began. It was the last day of the third week, learning about love. The little novices still practice meditation to be enlightened in the Dharma. Meditation is a basic mindfulness practice to reduce nervousness or drowsiness. The daily morning chant allows the novices to review their status as inheritors of the Buddha. Although the novices had to practice the Sekhiyavata together with Praajan, many of them had their own personal methods to remain focused on their present tasks. As the sun rose, the time for the alms round near Wat Ba Sangam community began. Although it was raining at first, the novices still went for alms as usual. Receiving alms offerings is not only a task to maintain the body, but it is also for the monks who are in the midst of disturbance to realize the mundane reality or the impermanence of things and to see the truth of things as they actually are. On this weekend morning, there were lots of people waiting to offer food as usual. Waking up early to prepare the offerings also helps to eliminate laziness. In addition to the villagers from nearby areas, the novices' families also join the offering. After the alms round, some of the novices assisted Praajan as a way to pay their respect.
Before breakfast, Praajan had the novices practice the Just as Rivers chant, another fundamental chant which the novices must memorize by heart. Most of the novices practiced with Praajan and amongst their friends. Some of them practiced by themselves. Okay. And I forgot the, the last part. Yes. Praajan separated some novices to practice outside the food hall. We will not go to next one uh, if you cannot memorize this one. If you, you can memorize this without looking at your book, then we'll move to another next passage. Praajan had the novices do a sitting meditation. During the meditation, Praajan informed them that they were here to participate as a novice, not as a boy. Why the city children cannot sit? Sitting meditation, why? Because they play the game. They play many games. So now, now you are the novice. Now you are training like a novice. You must better than them. Normally, the monks who use the Wat Nong Ba Pong method of practice have one meal per day and spend only 30 minutes consuming it. This reminds them that they should not eat too much and indulge themselves in the taste, and they should realize that eating is just a necessity for survival. At mealtime, Pra Ajahn gave the novices a limited time to get their food. Five, no, 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 five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, go, 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 up, just walk past and grab and pick and select, don't stop too long. The novices who had been warned about spending too much time eating were able to finish their meals before most of their friends. At the same time, some of the novices had a chance to wash Praajan's hands. First step, second step, third, so one drop. Okay. The water, uh, you, you no, no, do like this, uh. you, know, no, you just pull like this. Come on. Okay, finish. Going back to do it like this for your mother and father, no? The daily routine of taking care of the requisites made the novices more active. The little novices have come halfway through their ordination lives, but there are still lots of things waiting for them to explore. Though the environment affects the learning of the little novices, an important thing for them is to express their firm determination to purify themselves as little novices.
after the novices finished their meals and tidied up the alms bowls and the dwelling, they gave Praajan a massage. Some of the novices still needed time to take care of their alms bowls. One of them arranged the bowls neatly. While storing the bowls, he looked at each bowl and rearranged them. His friends sat calmly and waited for Praajan, but he was still working on the arrangement. Finally, Praajan came and started the morning lesson. Praajan had previously informed the novices that because of their age and maturity, they were still not allowed to practice a forest pilgrimage. But today they had a chance to learn and practice the basics of Tutanga. You think that we are learning here? Well, the Ajahn is someone who show you how he's using it, uh, growth, and for your stuff, everything when you're checking or uh, outside monastery. You just learn, for example, here, we separate a three cook, and Kitty one cook, Kunagaro one cook, and Ajahn Panu and Tan Ice one cook, for show how they put the hang it on and growth, and hopefully is on your stuff, bone and G1 and something properly here. Three groups of novices picked up the necessary utensils for Tutanka. Days before, they had seen pictures of Praajan's utensils. Praajan taught them some basic techniques, starting with how to stretch a rope for hanging glow. Gloat is a long-handled umbrella or sunshade. It is portable and used as an instant monk's hut, which is a requisite for a forest pilgrimage or tutanga. In the past, the monks inserted the hilt of the sunshade into the ground, which is quite difficult in some landscapes. Later on, it was made lighter so it could be hung between trees. In order to hang a sunshade, rope skills such as tightening, tying, and untying are basic requirements. And then one tie, and then like this. This one, this one. Double, huh? Yes. Double and tie. Double and tie. Okay. Yeah, you see, like this. Okay. When when you want to get get it off, you just pull. You pull that. Ah. Oh, I. It's like tying a shoelace. Yes. But to me, Ajahn, to me, I like to do like this. Oh, not good. Not good. Why? Why not good? Because you have to, you have to pull this one. You see? In addition to erecting a gloat, forest-dwelling monks need to acquire more fundamental and detailed skills. You put your chi one in inside your ball when you go to them. And every every stuff you have, 
You put it inside your ball. After the gloat was erected, there were still many steps involved in making it practical for lodging. I show you first. Put down. Okay. You see? And do here. And then you mark. When moving from place to place, monks have to know how to keep their requisites portable for travel. Donning the saffron robes neatly is still not an easy task for some of the novices. During a tutanga, novices would need to don the saffron robes neatly and bring lots of requisites with them. After practicing in the food hall for a while, Pra Ajahn let the novices practice outside. Pra Ajahn chose a suitable practice area for the novices. Okay, so now you come down, put put in your bowl. And there will be a ghost in it. On the tree. Or animals. Put your bowl. You are. Oh my god, Don't worry. Although the novices had spent some time practicing in the food hall, when they tried to do it in natural surroundings, each step was not as simple as it seemed. In reality, the monks from Wat Nong Ba Pong are able to go on a pilgrimage after they have practiced Tutanga in the temple for at least five years. The senior monks will consider if they are ready for Tutanga. One who is allowed to practice Tutanga in the forest is called a succeeder. The purpose of Tutanga is to live an ascetic life in the forest to gain more Dharma experience, patience, self-dependence, and to learn the profound Dharma by heart. Today, the knowledge of Tutanga was merely foundational for the youths. There are still many other things the monks will have to learn to prepare themselves before going for a forest tutanga.
Each afternoon, the novices learn through activities which support their development, suitable for their age. In this afternoon's learning process, the novices had a chance to boost their body and mind through an activity called Five Elements – Earth, Water, Wind, Fire and Heart. For today's first activity, the novices created their own Buddha image from clay with Mr. Dusadi Rachmani, or Mr. D, a sculptor whose works are inspired by his interest in Buddhism. Mr. D introduced himself, then invited the novice to sculpt an image of the Buddha with his close assistance. Ah, don't use water right now. Yeah, you don't need water right now. As the clay is hard, it has to be softened by kneading before it can be used. Most of the novices had to put in quite a bit of effort to mold it. Before long, the rain poured down, so the novices had to move into the study hall. Every novice concentrated on sculpting. Although they had never done it before, they were fully focused on their work. Sculpting the image reminded the novices of the Buddha. I know Buddha, Sama, Sangha, and the And who knows the path of peace? Let them be able and upright, straight forward and learn, and gentle and speech, humble and not conceited. Not only does sculpting enhance imagination and the thought process of determining shape and size, but it also improves hand-eye coordination. Furthermore, it helps with the movement of small muscles, which is the key to develop children's skills in doing delicate work, such as writing, drawing, or crafting. Due to a limited amount of time, some of the novices hurried to finish the sculpture before the time was up. Besides Mr. D, who assisted everyone in molding their sculptures, Hunter, a psychologist who has observed the novices for a couple of weeks, also joined the activity. Many of the novices began drawing the face and other details of their Buddha image. Each of them had their own technique to create a unique work of art.
As the sculpting activity came to an end, Hunter asked the novices to present their works. This is my Buddha. It's the, the Buddha suffering. I can show you my extra function on the back. <laughs> and then I, I, I made ear holes and nose holes for some reason, don't know why. <laughs> I like my Buddha, I wanted to paint it. I got this thing and some hair. And it looks different no, colours. I got this thing from like some Buddha statue. It has like a flame on the top of the head, so I did it. But it's kind of shaky. It's smiling and it has a really sharp nose and long ears. I think in this card, we don't need people who have high skill to do good work. Good work is come from love and feeling really want to do it. And I think we, we're pretty good at this make something that we love to do and the pieces come out quite good. Give some feeling that, that we can see. But at the Ubersot, um, like there are three statues and they had the spiky thing at the top. And it also had the fire. I made an island with um, a palm tree on it. And this is also the details, details of, the, of the robe. I thought it would fail because it, looks, it looked weird. And then um, Hunter said for me to uh, make it flat and then he started shaping the legs and, and we managed to fix it. And then I got some help from Hunter. And then Pacha and Ice came to uh, get the details on my face and made the ears for me. Before the end of the session, the instructor summarized the morals of this afternoon's class. Who know about four elements? Earth. Water, wind, and fire. Earth, water, wind, wind and, and fire. Do you know the clay have that four element also? So the fire make the clay to be something really strong, so make it long life. And whenever it have heart, it will be human like us. The novice representatives thanked Mr. D for coming. Thank you for teaching us about um, sculpting the clay and the four elements. And we learned that you need to have patience to make something that needs detail to make it look good. This afternoon, the novices learned and practiced various skills that are useful for their life experiences and also implanted the Dhamma in their hearts to help them develop into good people in the future. We would like to invite all Buddhists to an alms offering of dried food for True Little Monk, a wisdom training program for novices, at 6 o'clock a.m. at Wat Ba Sangam, Date Udom, Ubon Rachatani. Please follow the summary of daily routines tomorrow at 9 o'clock p.m. Follow us worldwide through the streaming on www.truelittlemonk.com.
www.truelittlemonk.com or Facebook, True Little Monk. The dual language broadcast is available on True Vision channels 60 and 99 and True Vision HD channels 119 and 333 and True Blue Panya channel. The dual language live broadcast is accessible 24 hours on True ID and True Blue Panya applications. All episodes of the Daily Reel documentary of True Little Monk are available on YouTube.